Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to episode 5 of the Ashra Mubashra series. My name is Mahira Qadri and today we will be discussing the life and incidents of Talha ibn Ubaidullah radiallahu anhu. I want to mention another Ashra Mubashra companion whose name is Zubair ibn Awam radiallahu anhu. These are two names that always come together in Sira and you can make an argument that they are always associated together. Prophet وسلم, said that they both had a special place in his life and are also his neighbors in Jannah. So let's talk about Talha radiallahu anhu and his life. He was born in the same tribe as Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, that is the tribe of Banu Taym. He was in Syria at the time that the prophethood came. When he returned, he got news that there was a prophet. So he went to his cousin, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, to confirm the news. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu confirmed that there is a prophet, that he is calling for the truth, and that Talha radiallahu anhu should follow him. He immediately accepted Islam. This shows the goodness in his heart. He was 18 years old when he accepted Islam. He was most likely the eighth person who accepted Islam. He was also a promising tradesman. His mother, her name was As-Sahba. Her name meant difficult, and she was a difficult woman. She wanted her son to be one of the leaders of Quraysh and was unhappy that he was now a Muslim. So what used to happen to the elite people accepting Islam in Quraysh? They weren't persecuted in public, rather they were given to their relatives. So she and her relatives tortured him. These relatives included the brother of Khatija radiallahu anha. His name was Nafil ibn Khalid. Both Talha and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhuma were tortured together. This is how they got the nickname al karnain meaning the two close friends who were tied together. Moving on to his main trait that we are highlighting today is his ihsan. He used to excel in everything. Sa'id bin Sayyid radiallahu anhu, the brother-in-law of Umar radiallahu anhu and one of the Ashram of Ashra, he said that he used to travel with Talha radiallahu anhu and he was the most generous in his food, clothing and water. Prophet ﷺ gave him three names because of this trait and I'll just be mentioning them. So the first is Talha tul khair, meaning Talha the excellence. Two, Talha tul Jud, meaning Talha the benevolent. Three, Talha tul Fayyid, meaning Talha the excessively generous. He participated in all the battles except for the Battle of Badr, since he was sent out on an expedition to Jerusalem with Sayyid radiallahu anhu, who I just mentioned previously. When he returned, he asked Prophet ﷺ if he has any reward. Turns out he did have some shares in the spoils, but Talha radiallahu anhu then clarified that he meant to reward in the hereafter. Prophet ﷺ replied that he surely has a share in the hereafter as well. The day of Uhud is also called the day of Talha. It is a specific incident that shows his excellence when Talha radiallahu anhu heard about the attack on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa on the day of Uhud, he defended him and stayed with him. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that on that day, on his right side was Jibra'il alayhi salam, and on his left was Talha radiallahu anhu. An arrow was shot on his hand while defending the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and his hand became paralyzed. On that day, he got 24 wounds, which was reported by his daughter. Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhuma ran to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to check on him, but the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them to go and check on Talha radiallahu anhu instead. On that day of Uhud, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave him another nickname, which was the Living Martyr. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to say that if you want to see a living martyr, see Talha radiallahu anhu, the walking shaheed. This shows how much he was loved by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Just to mention his marriage, he was married to Umi Kulsum, the daughter of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Some more incidents showing his excellence is that once he had 700,000 silver coins that he made out of a business trip that he distributed to all the poor people in Medina. He used to also look after all the members of his tribe, of the tribe of Banu Tham. The more he gave, the more he got. Once a long distant relative came and asked for help. Talha radiallahu anhu didn't really know him, but he sold one of his lands to Asman radiallahu anhu and gave the relative 300,000 silver coins. This shows his excellence and generosity. Towards the end of his life, he witnessed the murder of Asman radiallahu anhu. He loved Usman radiallahu anhu immensely, and his murder was very saddening. So he joined the army of Aisha radiallahu anhu. 
Anha, and they went to go meet Ali radiallahu anhu in Busra, Iraq, to talk about the murder of Osman radiallahu anhu. So there in that battle of uh, Jamal, he was killed. He was killed by one of the Khawarij, meaning one of the new foreign Muslims. Ali radiallahu anhu cried on his death and said that may Allah make us meet as brothers again in Jannah as we were brothers here. With this, we will end the story. The lesson here is to add excellence in all your actions. Thank you for joining me for this episode. See you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum.